Leaving all my worries, I prepare for something new Whatever it was that held me back, I'm sure it wasn't true Holding on too long and unresolved questions holds you down What could have been a friendly smile has turned into a frown I'm moving on and on On and on Ayazan Idilova was a fashion design student working for a local tailor shop in Almaty, Kazakhstan. But after being contacted by a stranger on social media, Ayazan went missing and was never seen alive again. This CCTV video footage shows her last known living activity. As you can see, the 19-year-old unsuspecting student is ushered willingly into the elevator by a man. Ayazan didn't appear to be resisting or under any suspicion of threat at the time. But shortly after that video ended, a horror of unbelievable proportions occurred. So the big question is, who's on first? Who is on first? Why are you asking me? For? I don't know. Wait a minute, I'm not... The man in the video is Rachman Berdi Torebekov, a 28-year-old pharmacist from Almaty, Kazakhstan. Reports claim he's a well-medically-educated individual from a good family, someone you wouldn't expect to be involved in the disappearance of a teenage woman. Well, spoiler alert, he was. And what you're about to learn is devastating. Prepare yourself. The following details will stick to you in an unwanted and uncomfortable way. I'm Mr. Black, and this is The Disturbing Truth, Quick Case, Episode 1. Leading the Lamb Ayazan Idilova was gearing up to spend the evening with her boyfriend. But first, she needed to go meet a man who had been in contact with her online in regards to being measured for a suit. There's no hiding the obvious. That man was Rachman Beardy, Torebekov, and the 19-year-old student went to meet him. When Ayazan didn't come home, her worried boyfriend reported her missing, and then clued police onto the messages exchanged between his girlfriend and the pharmacist. Two days after the CCTV footage recorded Ayazan and Rachman Beardi getting into the elevator, cops arrived at the apartment block looking to question the 28-year-old man about the missing woman. But no matter how much they knocked, Rachman Beardi refused to open the door, so police had no choice but to break it down and enter the apartment by force. But what they found inside was a full nightmare in mid-flight. As authorities burst through the door, Rachman Beardy cut his own throat. First aid was quickly administered on the scene, and the medically trained pharmacist was rushed to the hospital for life-saving treatment. The exact circumstances surrounding the death of Ayazan Idilova are bleak. Apparently the court heard the details in secret. But here's what we do know. When the cops finally interrogated him, Rachman Beardi admitted to everything. He made advances towards Ayazan in his apartment. She declined and rejected him, but he wanted sex, and he took it anyway. Then he murdered the poor innocent student in cold blood, her exact cause of death, to my knowledge, wasn't released. But what the coward of a man did next was unthinkable. He cut out all of Ayazan's fingernails and ripped out every one of her teeth. When the cops photographed the evidence, every single fingernail and each of the torn out teeth had been placed in its own individual plastic bags. Rachman Beardy was trying to cover his tracks. And in the process of doing so, he also cut off the student's head and boiled it in a pot. It was reportedly still simmering on the stove when the police entered his residence. Rachman Beardy also dismembered the young woman and spread her remains all across the city in different trash cans. 
The victim's family were devastated, obviously, and they labeled the pharmacist as an evil maniac. Rachman Beardy was found guilty by way of confession and sentenced to 25 years in prison, as well as being ordered to pay the family of his victim around $46,000. It apparently took him 24 hours to do what he did to Ayazan, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find a single picture of the cowardly monster. His face is even blurred in the CCTV footage. Now, I know that sometimes this is done because they don't want to bring attention to the bad people in this world, but does that actually make any sense? Shouldn't we know where found evil is at all times? Especially if you're going to let it out someday. They should have shown his face. The victim's photos appear in several articles that discuss this case, but not her killers. It feels like he's protected. As a matter of fact, the whole trial seems hidden. After all, the court heard the details of the case in secret, and most of the info we have comes from the brother of the victim. It's sad. The cold-blooded, murdering son of a bitch will be out of prison in his early 50s, and no one will have anything to recognize him by. Do we really think that when someone commits a crime like this, they can ever be truly rehabilitated? How can they ever be trusted? And who decides that they're trustworthy? I think it's insane. Don't the people around the bastard in the future deserve to know who he is and what he's done? The answer is yes. Stop hiding these monsters in the dark in a closet and pretending like they don't exist. They had their evil little fun and then they do a bit of time and they get out so they can do it again. Let him be known to all. It's the self-defense of the future. Because one day he'll get freedom and we won't even have knowledge. And my guess is he'll get out on good behavior and then receive a new identity to start his new life. Yeah. Court ordered forgiveness. That's very Jesus of them. And call me cruel. But this evil pot of piss shouldn't be protected. There's no redemption story here. This was premeditated from the start. The moment he contacted her on social media, he knew what his intentions were. I dare say they never changed. Just go back and watch the CCTV footage again. Notice the way he ushers her into the elevator. He puts his grubby hands on her, moving her quickly out of the hall to avoid suspicion. He didn't want anyone to see her there. So don't give me the insanity bullshit. He knew what he wanted, and he knew what he was doing. He didn't want anyone to interrupt his sick plans. He didn't want to get caught because he knew damn well what he was doing was evil. But what he wanted mattered more than her life. So he used his and hers both up at the same time with one stone. So let's not give him another one. Idiots. The bottom line is, this man lured that poor student into his home of horrors like he was leading a lamb to slaughter. Rachman Beardy, I hope you die in prison. Cold, alone, and in pain. You deserve absolute hell for what you did and I'm positive it will find you. Rest in peace, Ayazan Idilova. My thoughts are with her family and friends. I'm Mr. Black, and this is The Disturbing Truth. Quick Case. Tofty!